Hi, I'm Dr. Rick Buenaventura, pain management physician. Today I'll be talking about alternatives to opioids and the management of chronic pain. Frequently I'll get asked questions about pain management. A common one is when should pain medications be used, particularly opioids. Opioids are used whenever a patient has pain. That's the only thing they're used for. You're going to use them whenever a patient has a significant legitimate pain medical condition that's causing pain to a degree that it's inhibiting their ability to heal, to rehabilitate, and to remain functional in their jobs or at home. A doctor should assess for other issues that might complicate the situation, such as issues of secondary gain for the patient, uh, psychological causes, addiction, criminal intent. What is an opioid contract? An opioid contract is basically an agreement between the doctor and the patient. It protects the patient's access to controlled substances, and it protects the ability of the doctor to continue prescribing these medications without concern for uh, regulatory boards coming down on him. Uh, it establishes a specific framework in which the prescribing can continue, and it is needed due to the controversial nature of the use of chronic opioid therapy in non-cancer patients. How do pain management contracts work, and are they effective? I would say yes, they are effective. These contracts state that the physician will continue to prescribe medications for the patient as long as the patient follows several rules. These rules might include prescriptions coming from only one doctor and filling that prescription at only one pharmacy. The pharmacy would usually be identified in the contract. Uh, the patient will agree to random drug monitoring to include things like urine drug testing, pill counts, and prescription monitoring database checks. The patient will not ask for early or after hours refills. They will not engage in illegal activity activity related to the sale of those prescription opioids or the use of illicit drugs. Failure to follow these and other rules can lead to cessation of the prescribing of the opioids and the discharge of the patient from that practice. Should pain management contracts be used in patients with, with chronic pain? Not necessarily. If the treatment regimen includes a controlled substance on a, control, on a chronic basis, then I would say yes. Uh, if the patient's history includes psychological comorbidities, possible issues of secondary gain, substance abuse, then certainly the answer is yes. Uh, with other patients, it's a physician decision, and it's going to be based on uh, his relationship with the patient, the functional status of those patients. Uh, if none of those issues of secondary gain are present, then they might not be necessary, but at the least he should consider a urine drug test. If someone has a history of drug abuse, why should sign an opioid contract make any difference? Well, it's important to use these contracts to establish ground rules to make the physician comfortable to prescribe these medicines and to allow the patient access to these medications. If the patient doesn't follow the ground rules set in the contract, then the patient has to understand that he could lose access to that form of treatment from that doctor. It's a good idea for both the doctor and the patient. What is an opioid consent? An opioid consent is a statement signed by the patient that affirms that the patient has been informed as to why he is receiving the opioids, the benefits of those drugs, the risks, and the alternatives. Risks might include things like tolerance, dependence, addiction, sedation, withdrawal, or even death. Uh, it's usually separate from the opioid contract, and it's a good idea for any patient on chronic opioid therapy to have an opioid consent in the, in the chart. Uh, it's important to remember the medicine is regulated at the state level, and what standard of care in one state might be different from another state. So you want to check with your state medical boards and state or local medical societies to see what's the current recommendations for opioid contracts and consents. And also you want to have a lawyer refer, I'm sorry, review your contracts and consents. Thank you and please tune in to additional segments in the series.